Some 35 million people have died of AIDS-related illnesses since the start of the epidemic in the 1980s. There are now effective treatments, so deaths from the disease have fallen by 45% since the peak of 2005. But around 2 million people still contract HIV every year, and a million die each year too. HIV and AIDS may have receded from the headlines, but the crisis is far from over. Well, to discuss what's being done, we're joined now by Hanukkah Schutemaker, Vice President and Head of Viral Vaccine Discovery and Translational Medicine at Janssen Vaccines, part of the Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies of Johnson & Johnson, and Matthew Hudson, Executive Director of NAM, the HIV AIDS Advocacy Organization. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Hanukkah and Matthew, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you. Thank you. So, Hanukkah, first of all, scientists have been trying to develop an HIV vaccine for more than 30 years now. How close are we, do you think? I think we have reason to be very optimistic. Um, I realise that there have been studies that have failed and um, people always get disappointed of those results, but actually we've learned a lot and we have applied those learnings in the vaccine candidate that Janssen is now working on. Um, we have excellent uh, data in the laboratory and uh, yeah, it's, I think it looks good and I'm really proud that uh, we are uh, continuing our commitment in the field of HIV. And one of the problems is that the virus keeps mutating. Is that the problem? It becomes a moving target? That's indeed one of the problems. So in different parts of the world you have different types of HIV. It's not just one virus, so you really need broad protection if you want to give the same vaccine to everybody that you have protection against all the HIV strains that are circulating in the world. So yeah, that's uh, a challenge. Uh, and Matthew, just to bring you in now, for people who haven't heard of NAM, what does it stand for and what is it? Uh, well, NAM used to stand for the National AIDS Manual because it was literally, when it first started out in 1987, it was a great big ring binder filled with all of the information around HIV and AIDS that we had at the time. And it was developed by people who were working on a helpline because that was when the campaigns around HIV started. Now, of course, uh, we have a much more global reach and particularly through our website, AIDS Map, which provides information both to people living with HIV and to healthcare providers around the world. And do you both struggle with perhaps the fact that HIV and AIDS have fallen out of the headlines and people maybe think that the crisis is over? First of all, I think it's absolutely fantastic that we now have treatment which is effective, but um, the crisis is far from over. I mean, if you look at even in the UK, we're still seeing about 6,000 people diagnosed per year, and we have about 100,000 people now living with HIV in the UK. And then if you look globally, it's, you know, we're, we're talking almost 40 million people are infected, with another 2 million people becoming infected each year. So we're talking now about the numbers of people and can we control it? And then the goal is, can we eradicate it? Yeah, and, and I think the biggest problem is that although there is antiviral therapy, that a lot of people are not aware of their HIV status. So they don't take therapy and then they are infectious to other people. So if you are not aware, you're not treated, you still transmit to another person. So only a vaccine can stop that transmission chain. And there are several pharmaceutical companies who are all competing to find a vaccine. Are you all more or less doing the same thing, taking the same approach? What is Janssen doing that's different? The Janssen approach is uh, really aiming at a, a vaccine that will give global coverage. So we use uh, what we call mosaic inserts to, to have uh, proteins of HIV that represent all the different types that are circulating in the world. And we bring these uh, proteins in with uh, attenuated, harmless, common cold viruses. So we use a virus as a vehicle to bring in an HIV protein. And it cannot cause HIV, it's completely harmless, but it does elicit protective immunity against HIV. And we have very promising data in the lab with this uh, platform. And Matthew, we've seen HIV sort of transformed from a death sentence to quite a manageable disease now, and there are even preventative treatments. So why do we still need a vaccine, do you think? Um, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, it's amazing that we have now reached the point where HIV is no longer a death sentence, so long as you have access to treatment. But what we've seen throughout history is that it's only when you develop a vaccine that you're actually able to eradicate a disease. At the moment, we can control it, so long as we have access to treatment. But if we're talking about eradication, we're talking about global eradication, a vaccine is what's needed. You can't treat your way out of it. <laughs> no, and I think that the point that I made before is that a lot of people are not aware of their HIV status, so they are not on treatment. 
and also the, the logistics of bringing treatment to everybody who needs it is, is uh, quite challenging. So a vaccine is, is likely the only solution to break the chain and to solve this problem. And we've had now the 20th annual HIV vaccine awareness day. So what are your thoughts, Matthew, first, that we still haven't got a vaccine? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because when Clinton kind of you know, set out the, you know, we're going to have a day which will be HIV vaccine awareness day, the, the goal then was that a vaccine would be developed in 10 years time. You know, 33 years ago, they were talking about it being developed in two years time. Um, so it just shows how complex it is and what a major challenge it is because HIV is a particularly complex virus to vaccinate against. Uh, and finally, Hanneke, how much is collaboration the key to finding this vaccine, do you think? It's absolutely key to, to be successful. We have a partnership with uh, governmental uh, uh, institutes, with, with foundations to, to also bring part of the funding. And with that, you bring all the necessary expertise to the table to get what we need and to, yeah, to make sure that we will be successful. Well, Hanneke and Matthew, thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in enterprise cyber risk and also in sustainability. Bye-bye for now.